Over two decades after Hong Kong's return to Chinese sovereignty, the city still hasn't enacted a security law to prohibit treason, secession, sedition and subversion as required by its basic law and the country's constitution. Last year's violent protests in the city spotlighted the urgent need for such a law. And that issue is being addressed at this year's meeting. A draft decision on establishing and improving the legal system and enforcement mechanisms for the Hong Kong SAR is being deliberated by China's national legislature. Some international media, however, have called the proposal the end of one country, two systems, what really are the rationale and necessity of such a law and why now? Joining me from Hong Kong is Lawrence Ma, barrister and chairman of the Hong Kong Legal Exchange Foundation and in Beijing, Lu Xiang, research fellow from the Institute of American Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. So first of all, let's take a look at uh, the increasingly notable national security risks in the Hong Kong SAR in recent years. We all remember very clearly uh, last year, for the second half and well into the beginning of this year, uh, protests, even riots, unrests sparked by a anti-extradition bill movement uh, left the city in a state of complete chaos. I mean, 10.5 million Hong Kong dollars of repair replacement for public facilities. Um, the economy was, was, was also plunged to the worst crisis since 1997 when the, when the region was handed back to China, to China. And for the whole year, the GDP contracted by 1.2 percent, not to mention all of the large numbers of weapons seized, the people who have been beaten up, uh, even killed sporadically. So, Laura why do you think such a law is urgently needed and uh, needed now? Well, national security for China has been a um, uh, has been a very um, uh, to a topic because it seems very the old days with, uh, since the fall of the um, uh, the Iron Curtain. Uh, China has always been a target of um, foreign influence. Now, coming back to Hong Kong, um, Hong Kong has, uh, when the basic law is being written uh, back in 1990, um, there has been a request by the Hong Kong, Hong Kong people that for national security laws, Beijing should let Hong Kong people write their own laws. And therefore, we have the Article 23 in the basic law saying Hong Kong should legislate for itself uh, national security laws. Now, 22 years has passed, and no national security law has been enacted. And the old ones are very much so obsolete and cannot be used to face and to tackle all these national security events that has been assisted by, aided by, and, 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 and concerted with uh, foreign powers. For example, in the 2014 Occupying Central movement, which is a movement that to contravene the eight, uh, 831 uh, central government decision. Um, and then last year, 2019, the anti-extradition bill um, social riots um, uh, leading to many injuries and deaths. Uh, and therefore, we see day and day the increase magnitudes of color revolutions in Hong Kong that foreign powers joined with local subversive powers join force together to create chaos in Hong Kong to subvert and sabotage the government in Hong Kong. And the, it seems the Hong Kong government cannot do anything because of the Legislative Council has been um, dominated uh, or, uh, or predominantly swarmed by opposition forces and it's impo impo impossible, politically impossible, to enact uh, Article 23 legislations. Okay. And now up to since last year, it, the, Hong, the central government cannot wait. It has to do something to protect the lives and safety of people in Hong Kong. Right. Um, Mr. Liu, how do you look at the connection between the absence of such a national secu security law for Hong Kong and the riots that uh, unfolded in Hong Kong and still continue to engulf the city? Hi, Liu Xian. Uh, actually, you know, uh, for the whole uh, second half of last year, we saw the unprecedented riot in non-stop riot in Hong Kong, and uh, that certain threaten the uh, daily life of everybody and uh, the economy. And uh, Hong Kong uh, ha uh, saw a 
a very serious decline in economy and uh, threatened the national uh, security of the region. And uh, overall speaking, uh, actually, it's also a threat to the uh, security situation of the whole country. So it's already late for the country to have a security law uh, upon, uh, upon Hong Kong, but uh, actually it's not too late now. And uh, uh, hopefully this law, uh, this law imposed on Hong Kong can be very helpful in restoring the economy and uh, daily life, uh, security, safety for the, common, the ordinary people. And uh, you know, Hong, uh, the prospect of Hong Kong is, is a kind of thing uh, for national uh, interest. And uh, this law is very important to uh, keep Hong Kong prosperous. Mr. Liu, what do you think are the rationale behind <clears throat> the uh, national legislature to uh, deliberate on the decision to enact such a law uh, in order to initiate the drafting of a specific law because this was left for Hong Kong to do and now basically the central government is saying okay we will do what we can do to safeguard uh, is this taking power away from Hong Kong to the central government how do you look at that uh, actually there is uh, some un a misunderstanding in Hong Kong and uh, somewhere else they thought one country two system is two systems beyond the one country. But actually, this two system is under one country. So uh, that's very important for us to understand this, uh, this key point. It's two systems under one country. Yeah. So the national, there is a need for the country to impose some kind of uh, some national laws upon Hong Kong. Okay. And uh, you know, in the second half of last year, uh, the most serious thing is that the uh, is that the opposition element were playing a kind of tie together strategy and that's very dangerous for the whole country so we have to do something. Hmm. Let's take a closer look at the article 23 of the basic law of Hong Kong. It says that uh, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall enact laws on its own to prohibit any act of treason, secession, sedition, subversion against the central people's government or theft of state secrets to prohibit foreign political organizations or bodies from conducting political activities in the region and to prohibit political organizations or bodies of the region from establishing ties with foreign political organizations or bodies. If you look at this um, provision, Mr. Ma, it's actually, I think it's actually very natural for any country to expect that their regions as an integral part of their country would have an obligation to make that kind of commitment. And yet, 23 years after the handover of Hong Kong, this article has not been enacted. What are the factors behind that? Well, because Hong Kong people are predominantly uh, concerned about their freedoms being cut off because of the, any nas national security legislations. Um, but this concern um, has been expressed, and people in Hong Kong have been expressing their views pretty freely. Hong Kong was actually ranked number three in the uh, World Human Freedom List, uh, ranked by the Fraser Institution um, in 2019. So Hong Kong is the one of the top uh, cities or regions ha which has the best freedom in the world. But people are still concerned because of the um, anti-communist, anti-Chinese sentiments that they, people cook up in by the local medias and by the international Western medias, so to speak, for so many years. But Hong Kong's freedom has been um, um, overwhelmed so much that people have um, abused their freedom into intruding on the freedom of other people, into intruding onto the freedom of the community rights. So as a result, the public suffer. The public interests of Hong Kong suffer. And therefore, it is time to put a stop to it because many of these people who are really not expressing their um, uh, freedom, uh, free, freedom of expression, um, uh, but really using freedom of expression to subvert the country, to de destabilize Hong Kong and to overthrow the government. 
Mr. Liu, how do you look at the concerns about uh, Hong Kong people's rights and freedom being encroached upon because of these uh, national top legislature action on the national security law? Uh, there are several principles, for instance, uh, firmly safeguarding national security, up upholding and improving one country, two systems, adhering to governing Hong Kong in accordance with the law, opposing resolutely opposing external interference and substantially safeguarding the legitimate rights and interests of Hong Kong residents. Will the future legislation guarantee the political rights and freedoms of the Hong Kong people? Oh, good question. Actually, freedom always relates to obligation and order. If you don't have social order, uh, what kind of freedom you, you can have? Uh, freedom doesn't mean chaos. So in the in the second year of last second half of last year we we saw total chaos in Hong Kong, and that's not a freedom that uh, that's disorder. So uh, for Hong Kong to restore order, especially after the the current the current pan pandemic, uh, the national uh, congress the national congress need to do more together with the Hong Kong SAAR government yeah. to. Uh, impose more laws and okay. the rules for people to get into order. All right, we have to leave at that time is running out. Many thanks to my two guests, uh, Lawrence Ma joining us from Hong Kong and Li Xiang joining us here in Beijing. You have been watching The Point with me, Li Xin, and that's it for this edition. Uh, as usual, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with Alex. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.